Hello everybody and welcome to our Tech Tuesday tutorial number 38. Today we go into appointment slots in Google Calendar. Well, it's good to be back from our long winter break, so let's just jump right into this. Appointment slots is a fairly obscure but useful feature for business or educational accounts. It does not appear for regular Gmail users. So what is it? Well, appointment slots allows you to set up appointments on your calendar that other people can reserve. For instance, uh, professors could have their students reserve time during office hours each week, or you might set up interview times that you would like people to book, things like that. So how do you make an appointment slot? Well, you go into Google Calendar in weekly or daily view, and you click anywhere on the calendar. You do not click the red create event button. You click anywhere on the calendar instead. And so let's say that you have office hours Mondays and Wednesdays from 9 a.m. to noon. So you go in here and click this and you may call this uh, office hours and choose appointment slots instead of event. When you click appointment slots, there's a slight little difference there. You can see that right there, it gives you the option to do a certain amount of duration for your slots. So you're gonna be creating a series of slots grouped together from 9 a.m. to 12. And the question there is how big are these slots? How, how much time are you gonna break them up into? So if you have office hours, you might just break it up into 30 minute periods, hoping to keep these meetings kind of short. If you're doing interviews, they might be 60 minutes, things like that. Now, if you want this to repeat, you'll need to go into the details for the event, which you could do that when you're creating it as well. Uh, you just go to more options and then it'll take you there, same thing. So when you go in there, just like any other event, you can modify it and you can say this repeats and stuff like that. So you can say this is a custom repeating thing and say that this is repeats Monday and Wednesdays and will end at the end of the semester, which for us will be in the last bit of the beginning of May, right? So you do this, and hit save. You can even add locations, you can even add descriptions, you can do anything you would normally do with a regular event. But in this case, you're really not adding guests, right? You're gonna provide this for them to sign up with. How do you get people to sign up for your slots then? You can't just invite them to the event, right? That would, that would invite them to this whole block and you don't even know who is signing up anyways. This is supposed to be set up so that someone else can kind of just stumble in there and sign up. If you do add guests, understand they're gonna get the appointment slots, the whole block. So this is useful if you have like an assistant or something like that, uh, or someone else is joining in on the interviews and things like that. But if you want them to sign up, if you wanna provide a link for the public to use, you go into the details of the event and you look for this where it says this calendar's appointment page. You click on that and you copy that address. Now, an important thing to note here is that you can see the slots are here, but also I see my stuff here. This may throw you a bit because you might think, I don't want them to see the rest of my calendar. No, actually what's happening is that you're seeing your calendar, whoever's viewing this page sees their calendar superimposed there. So if you then take this um, URL and email it out or put it on your website or put it on Facebook or anything else like that, other people in your organization can then access it and sign up. So let's see what that looks like. Okay, so this is me visiting this same link using my professional uh, account, my regular George Southern account. And the green items there are things that are on my personal account. And so I can see that I've got, you know, Tech Tuesday prep on Mondays and I've got a little bit of stuff here on Tuesdays. Nothing else is actually booked on my calendar yet. So I can come in here and then click on an item or a slot and customize it. It puts my name in there. Uh, that is the name of the person signing up, not the name of the person who hosted it. And I can put in uh, stuff there, I need to talk about last quiz or something like that and hit save. And so when you save this, it books that appointment, it eats up that slot. And more importantly, when I come back and look at it from with my other account here and I refresh, then you'll see that this is eaten up here and I have uh, a meeting with Daniel on that day. Yeah, no one else can sign up for that now. I'm gonna hop on back here and refresh this and see that I've got this meeting here on my calendar for that. If I go just look at my calendar only, then I can see that I've got the office hours right there. All right, if I wanna cancel the event, I simply go in there and delete it as the student or the person who's signing up for it. I can just go in there and remove this from my calendar and send cancellations. Also, the person who created the event block or the, the appointment slots can do the same. Then the next time someone goes there, that slot opens back up. To distinguish your appointment slots from other events, just look and see that they've got this little icon that looks like a set of, like a table. And that's the difference between your appointment slots and your regular events. Okay, I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, go ahead and hit that like button. In fact, why not just support us and hit that subscribe button? 
comment in the comment box below for any ideas for Tech Tuesdays in the future. Share this video with your friends, and we will see you guys next week. Bye-bye.